Okay, friends, uh, this is another moment I come to you to share with you the message which I believe by God's grace is going to bless you from the book of Revelation. It's an, uh, a forgotten warning that Jesus Christ gave or suggestion. We know we have one time to live, especially we who are living in the end times. And uh, when Jesus Christ comes, there will be no second chance. So we have to take the issue of eternal life the issue of our life after death, very serious. It uh, applies that cannot be compared to anything. So we have to put all our heart for the salvation of our souls. Okay? We have to take this issue serious. We don't have to pray religion and uh, think, think that things are going to be okay. Just have to go to the church and come back home and go to the church and come back home and do here and there and those duties have been given in my denomination and say I'm going to heaven. Things are not like that. We are living the time when uh, the, the the church is at sleep. The book of, 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 of Matthew, Jesus gave prophecy of those ten virgins, both slept. And so because you're in that time where there is a paralyzation of the church, not only the SD church, even the whole church, there is that spirit of paralyzation or paralyzation, whatever you can call it. Like there's not that power that the church had. Uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the power of evangelism. It remains to few who are struggling to move because the Holy Spirit is not silenced for, uh, totally. But there's something that is needed, okay? When you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, we find at the end of, the, at the end of the, the, this chapter, we found the last church of Laodicea. And uh, we know this message. Actually, I'm not here to speak everything about this, but I'm here to speak something at the end of this uh, message. And verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in him. And then and I will sup with him and he with me. This is the message which requires us to be very keen. Well, why do I say this? At the end of the times, we find one of the qualifications or one of the character that those who will survive the end time crisis will have that's the faith of Jesus Christ and, and uh, obedient to God's commandments. Why those two characters? At the time we are living, we'll be used to do things on our own thinking. Just attending the church, but doing things in a, in a way we see things working and we give up Jesus. We give out Jesus. So he's calling to enter into our hearts. Like in our heart, we have to think and examine ourselves. That have I left Jesus Christ out of my life and living the life as I see it better for me to be? Is Jesus inside me or is he outside calling for me to let him in? Because we know our seat of our hearts, where Jesus Christ needs to sit, there cannot be two masters. That's why I just said you cannot save two masters. So either we are saving self or we are saving Jesus. Okay? And we know self is self-deceived. We can deceive ourselves that we are saving God. But when we welcome Jesus Christ, he will come and tell us clearly that in you, something else resides. And so he's calling for us to think about opening our hearts to welcome in. To welcome him in our hearts. It's not a matter of only individuals. This was the message given to the church. Okay, so even the church need to let Jesus 
inside. That if you are the, the pastor, welcome Jesus to the church to lead himself. We individuals, we have to welcome Jesus Christ in us. And this requires something which is cost, uh, costful. And uh, what I say is, when you welcome him, means you are willing for him to take control. We don't welcome Jesus in our hearts so that we can tell him what to do. means when we welcome Jesus, we are willing that he will tell us what to do. Welcome him to come and sweep the whole house and take out what does not require to be there. He becomes the, the owner of the house. He, he becomes the, the, the special guest of our hearts, of our house and of our life. And because the master, when he comes, he has to direct us. The problem is many of us, we are not willing to let our life out of control. We want to control things. We want to live somewhere ourselves. We want to do th- spend money the way we want. The issue of surrendering and seeking God in our life is something which is not more preferred by many. And sometimes it's because of, of self-deception and the devil deception. But the warning is given that... Let us consider, you know your life yourself, okay? I cannot say you don't have Jesus, I don't know your life, okay? But you know your life 100%. Is it focused on self-righteousness? Is it focused on doing God things alone? Is it focused on anything outside of Jesus Christ and him controlling you? Is it led by the Bible? Is it led by the word of God? By the will of Jesus Christ? Are you living for Jesus? Or are you living for the church? There are two people. There are those who love the church. That they are willing to kill Jesus. Anybody who intercepts uh, intercepts him, him or interrupts them in their way. Defend the church. They are willing to kill him. They are living for church. They don't want anybody to intervene anything in their lives. But there are those who are living for themselves. They don't want to be warned. They are living the life of sin, the life of luxury, being like a world. You know, that's why I say now the, the church has been transformed, becoming like the world. The way we drink, the way we eat, the way we dress. And uh, things are just like the same with no difference because we have no power to resist the devil. And so he has been able to conquer us and transform us. So there are those who are living for themselves. So are you the one living for self or living for religion? And there are some who don't even know what are they living for. For the church, they are not there. For self, they are not there. They are just living the life as if the life has no plan. They are, the life has nothing. They, they don't have anything to do with the life. Just living a day and it's just enough. If I find the sin, I commit, I repent. And I keep living. They don't know the future. But friends, I want to encourage you today. But let us think about our life. We have, a, a, we have years to live. Yes, we don't know when are we going to sleep, okay? But we have a decision to make today. Either you want Jesus to come in our hearts. He's saying, behold, I stand at the door knocking. He wants to enter. And that's something which is real. My friend, Jesus, to enter into the human's heart, human's life, human's heart, to live in you, it's something which is real. It's not an ideology that when he say, I want to enter, he will not. He will come. And when he comes, things become different. When you think, those who have been living with Jesus Christ and then they have fallen back, they can, they can see the difference when the Holy Spirit visits them. See, you have... Backslidden, 
And so they can see that they have left something. They have left the experience they had with God. The deaf are swept us back to the, to the scene. But at least we can see a little picture that we were walking close with God. And we have left that love we have with God or toward God. And so often this is the time where we need to consider examining our spiritual life and thinking that we need now to return to God. Okay? This is the moment we need to think about returning to God. That's the calling. End time people who are going to survive the crisis like now, what's happening are those who have the faith of Jesus. When you have the faith of Jesus Christ, surely you will obey. And not only the Ten Commandments, but all the teachings of Jesus. There are those who will be following God's plan. That's why the book of Revelation 14 says that they follow the Lamb wherever it goes. And Jesus Christ in the book of, of, of John chapter 12, he said, Where I am, there my servant will be. And the one who served me, the Father, will have respect over him. And so what? We need to love Jesus. But we need to love him not because uh, we have that love in ourselves. We need to ask him to help us to love him. We need to pray to know him. It's a process. Just make a choice today that I want Jesus Christ to take control of my life. Just that choice and start to pray about it. Start praying about it, that I want Jesus Christ in my heart. I want him to control my life. I want him to, to be my guide. Just do that. Keep praying. Keep studying the Bible. And then you shall see new things happening in your life. Friends, yes, we have to do things for God. But remember... You have to do things with God. We are not saved because we have done something better for God. We are saved because we have God in our lives. We are not going to heaven as workers and slaves who perform their duties. We are going to heaven as sons and daughters of God. So remember, what saves you is relationship. As a son and daughters because of faith. And the genuine faith works. But we don't need to look for works to justify faith. We need to have faith and our works will justify, justify the faith we have. Don't look for the works to justify your faith. But look for faith which will bring up results. If I don't bring results, means the problem is on my faith I have. I'm not built on the, on the rock of Jesus Christ. So it's not the matter of me going to do what is good and what God likes, just find that I have a true faith, but it's me to go back on the word, on the source, and see if I've connected on the right source. And from that, I may make a change. If I have been connected to the wrong source, I mean, there won't be electricity flowing. There won't be light. Okay? But if I'm connected to the right source, there will be a light shining, bulbs working, electronics, things will be working because I've connected to the right source. And so what do we need? Let us go and check our connection. Is it still there? Am I on a fire? Oh, fire is going down. I need to turn it up on. How do I do that? Checking the connection. My friend, this is the reminder. Only reminder. You can hit or not. It's not like mandatory thing that you have to do this. No, my friend, this is just a free choice, a free uh, message I give to every one of you. Because I know some of us have been deceived by the devil we are living the world like the world. And uh, we have left Jesus Christ outside of our lives. We have walked with the legion, preaching our denomination, and not preaching about Jesus. 
sharing denomination, being busy for denomination, and not for Jesus. Preaching Jesus not because of love, but because of duty we are all to do. This is it. So we need to check and welcome Jesus. He says, Behold, I stand. Jesus is still standing at doors of our heart, knocking means we have hope for our salvation. If you are living, or you are listening to this message, there's still hope for your salvation. You are not late to be saved. You need to heed to the calling. Behold, I stand at the door knocking. If any man up hears the voice, you need to hear the voice. If you don't hear, you will not open. And if I don't hear, what do I say? What do I do? I have to pray so that I can, my ears, spiritual ears, maybe I'm, bri- I'm deaf, I cannot hear spiritual things. So I have to ask even for that. God, open my ears that I can hear your voice. Because if I don't hear, I will not open the door. And if that happens, means I will get lost. And no hope for me. But because you have heard this voice, it might not sound so sharp in your hearts. Yes, pray. At least the Holy Spirit can have something to do with you. There's still hope for you to be saved. No matter what kind of sin you have gone down, maybe you have been an Adventist, a Christian, working for Jesus and loving Jesus, now you're in the, you're, you are in the life where God is far away from your life. Religion has become something normal. And you need to wake up. Don't start do things to wake up. Start having the right person to wake up. If you do those things to wake up, You're putting yourself in the target for the devil to attack you and he's going to attack you and you will not have power to defend him because you're doing things of the soldiers, not being a soldier yourself. You're just living like a soldier, a wearing uniform of a soldier, but inside you are just a civilian. You don't know even how to handle a gun. And so the enemies will not you as the soldier. They will come to attack you vehemently with a lot of weapons. And trainees, people who are trained to fight soldiers. And those enemies, they will come and crush you totally. Because you behaved outwardly. But inside, you are not. So, this is the warning. I give. Don't go to fight. Like those Israelites. Joshua told them, hey, don't go to fight. Wait. That was Moses. When they had sinned, they wanted to go to fight. And Moses said, don't go. God is not with you. Then they went and many of them died. And so, go to the source. And when you go to the source, pray. Stay there at your feet. At the feet of Jesus, ask for power. Ask for him to clothe you with the lobe of his righteousness. And then he will empower you to go out at the witness. Because all things come from his power. From his Holy Spirit. So, may God bless you. I'll take this time to think about doing connection with Jesus. All things rely on one person, that Jesus. But we know when we accept Jesus Christ, our life will be transformed. You won't be the same people because the genuine faith is 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 just is is working, transforms. So may God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.